Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, thanks for joining us. So today I want to talk to you about a specific thing that happens in Return of the Jedi. It's been bothering me since I was little, and that's why does Emperor Palpatine explode when he falls down the shaft? There's no explanation. The most practical reason from a filmmaking technique is that explosions are awesome, right? It adds excitement and uh... No, and also it gives the audience a certainty that the Emperor is dead. Remember Luke Skywalker falling down a similar shaft in Episode 4? And Darth Maul falling down this one in Episode 1? They both survived, so that's like a 2 out of 3 survival rate, which is quite good. Then if we look at the script, there really isn't much of an explanation either. So we did some research, scoured the internet, looked for some fan theories, and uh, we came up with our own conclusion. Number one, the Emperor fell down the reactor shaft and eventually hit the reactor, and it caused an explosion. Well, that seems unlikely. The Death Star was over 160 kilometers in width, which means the shaft itself was probably around 80 kilometers long. And let's say the Death Star had similar air pressure and gravitational pull to our planet, the Emperor would be falling at a terminal velocity of 190 kilometers per hour. Which means it would have taken several minutes for the Emperor to actually hit the bottom. And guys, don't forget, it was Lando and Wedge who blew up the core, not Palpatine. Number two, the Emperor hits some kind of containment field that is shielding the reactor and overloads it. If you look closely at the footage, there are two bluish rings at the bottom of the reactor shaft, which kind of look like a deflector shield of some kind. Which makes sense. A giant open shaft to the middle of the Death Star should have some kind of protection over it, right? Anyway, when the Emperor hits the blue rings, there is a massive explosion, and shortly after, the blue rings turn less blue. But normally, when deflector shields get taken down, they simply disappear. So, why was there a massive explosion, then? Number three, the Emperor did what is known as a dark side burst. Let's look at the Emperor's explosion. For one, it's blue, and it's also transparent. And when it recedes back down the shaft, it almost flickers like an electrical storm. This is not what normal explosions look like. Which leads me to think what actually did happen was a dark side burst. Very powerful Jedi who have reached attunement with the Force were able to leave their physical bodies behind and become a Force ghost. This transition was very peaceful, as their bodies would literally just fade away. The Sith equivalent, however, was achieved through pure hatred and malice. When they died, their bodies disappeared as well, but in a terrifying explosion of energy. So, did the Emperor really die, or was he able to transcend his physical form? In the non-canon EU, when Leia Organa Solo and Mara Jade visit Endor, they both sense the powerful echo of the Emperor's spirit. And later on in the Dark Empire series, Palpatine comes back several times from the Force Netherworld and tries to possess all sorts of people, including Leia and Han Solo's baby. No, not him. He probably would have liked it. Weirdo. Anyway, my conclusion is this. When the Emperor fell down the reactor shaft, he did indeed explode in a dark side burst, releasing his spirit from the physical world. How he died? I honestly don't know. Maybe it was from hitting the containment field. Or maybe the electricity coursing through his body finally killed him. Or maybe he knew he was going to die, so he prematurely released his spirit like the Sith Lords of old. Officially, Star Wars has given no reason why Palpatine explodes, so the answer is still out there. And if you guys have uh, some theory, please comment below and let me know. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And as usual, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.